pirates, lawless scoundrels of the sea, salty sea dogs roaming the waters, searching for unsuspecting ships to plunder, and free grog to drink. Only, maybe they weren't so lawless. Many of the most famous pirates actually enforce strict pirate codes on their crews, and some of these guidelines can be rather surprising. For example, the code of the infamous pirate captain Bartholomew Roberts, one of the most successful pirates ever, contained articles for a system of democratic decision-making, a curfew, and even a ban on playing cards or dice for money. No gambling? Not on Black Bart's ship! Captain John Phillips banned smoking in his ship's hold. And the notorious Edward Lowe banned drunkenness in battle! The pirate codes often contain provisions for the settling of disputes between crew members as well. Going back to Bartholomew Roberts, his code clearly states there is to be no fighting on board the ship. Instead, all disputes were to be settled on shore at sword and pistol. These codes did more than just establish laws and punishments, though. The codes explained exactly how captured treasure, or booty, would be distributed among the crew members. In the case of Edward Lowe's crew, the captain is to have two full shares, the quartermaster is to have one share and one half, the doctor, mate, gunner, and boatswain one share and one quarter. For many pirates, pirate codes weren't the only laws they had to worry about. Many infamous pirates were actually privateers, pirates paid by governments to attack ships belonging to other countries. The famous English explorer Sir Francis Drake was actually a privateer, spending much of his career ransacking Spanish ships and getting paid for it by the Queen Elizabeth. Ironically, it may have been that in a world full of theft, violence, and chaos, pirate codes and government-paid privateers brought some much-needed order to sailing ships full of brigands, allowing these plunderers to more efficiently steal from and terrify their victims. <laughs>